Hi guys, it's Tanisha and I'm back. In a previous video, we talked about my frugal home tour where I took you through my house and showed you all of my frugal finds or things that were gifted to me for free. And a lot of people responded to my art collection. And I even had a request to show more of the art pieces and the stories behind them. So voila, in today's video, that's what we're gonna talk about. Go through, and we're gonna talk about some of the things I have and where I got them from. Now, one of my favorite things to collect while traveling is art, simply because it's usually inexpensive way cheaper than what you would find if you was trying to buy it in America, where they will mark it up to the highest extent of mock-up ability. But normally overseas, when you're buying from the crafters themselves, the bargaining system is in, is in place, and they actually expect you to go back and forth for lower prices. I have a story about that. I'll tell you when we get to it. But right here on my stand in my bedroom, this is what we have. This piece right here, I actually got in Chile. It's on wood and it is wood, I don't know what you would call it. Is it like wood burning where the artists actually um, burn the wood for the picture and then add it materials to create the image and the color and the vibrancy of it all. And then I also love this right here. This was given to me by my gratitude sister, Donna Maria. And this is from when we were in Spain, in Barcelona. And we went to this restaurant called Seven Portes. Oh, it was so amazing. But what I love is on this picture frame represents just about all the places that we actually went together and built memories together in Spain, in Barcelona. And this turtle was given to me by Jay when he went on one of his first cruises and he bought this back for me. Over here, I purchased this when I was in Ghana from the art crafter himself. And I just love this piece. Again, it is it's heavy. It's a bronze sculpture. I think it's bronze, iron one of them things. And I just love it. Representation of motherhood, of balance, of strength, of getting it all done and making it all happen. And what makes this even more precious for me, this piece right here, is the fact that I bought it when I was over there with my dear, dear friend Kim, who has since then passed away. This piece right here, I actually broke. The um, stand is right here. But what this is, is blown glass that I got in Moreno, Italy. A little island right off of Venice. This poster board right here, I had framed. And this was also created and designed by a friend of mine who actually designed my book covers. So of course I had to frame this. For colored girls, for colored girls, for colored girls. Y'all know for colored girls who considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. That is another book of inspiration for me. And I just love finding pieces that inspire me that I can hang throughout my house as a reminder that your home is your vision board. Your home is your vision board. And every place you look should be a reminder of where, the direction where you're moving or memories that you can look back at and smile or just that thing that just inspires you to do better, be better and live better in your own life. All right, so in this bathroom, it's just some generic things going on here. When I say generic, it's because I purchased this simply to go with the color scheme of what I was doing in this bathroom. And this is the oranges and the teals and just vibrancy, right? And then, of course, this right here. I just love things that you can read that just inspires you. Run, create, push, kick, ask, change, give, optimize, search, see, write, dance, dream, spin, hear, fly, desire, move, relax, love, 
kiss. Yes, yes, this. In this room right here, I kind of call it like Moody Mondays. I don't know. This room just reminds me of Moody Mondays. And so, some of my crooked art that I hung up, a lot of this, again, is um, places throughout Europe. We have some Paris. We have some London, that sort of thing. And I don't know, but is that one broke? <laughs> I'm just noticing this. Look at that. The cardboard and... Okay, to-do list, fix it. But yeah, but I love Europe. I think I love Europe for the history of it, for the historical presence of it. America is such a young country. And whenever I travel to Europe, it's just something to know that I'm walking on ancient, ancient streets and such. That's what this is. But of course, this picture right here with the, the rain and the umbrellas, and it just reminds me, I call this Moody Mondays because it reminds me of no matter what the weather is doing, if it's raining, go outside, get wet, get wet. And you see Moulin Rouge, and again, just that nod to art. If we come over here, we see I frame this book postcard. Um, Will Haygood was mentor um, of mine, a writer, um, in this book right here, in black and white. No, actually, this isn't even the book. In this book right here, in black and white, The Life of Sammy Davis Jr., phenomenal, phenomenal. But again, I just had to um, frame that because I'm just so inspired by art. And over here, the same thing. I framed this program for the 2006 Hurston Wright Legacy Award. Hurston Wright actually supports every stage in the development of a writer's life. It's especially geared toward African American writers and I did sit on the board of directors for this for a few years. And so again, this is just always inspiring to me. We've had some of the greatest writers of our times come through and pay, not only pay tribute, but also participate in a lot of the programs that Hurston Wright has put on and funded throughout the years. And then this is a postcard from my book, All Black Girls Ain't Got Rhythm. And I did a event one time, the book release party, where I had these awesome violinists, Cindy Schultz, Marcia, they came through and they played and accompanied me on violin while I read. And this was all before YouTube. And so that's their signatures right there. And then another mentor of mine, Tayari Jones, she actually came to this event, my event right here. But Tayari Jones, um, some of you may not know her, especially if you're not into like reading or the literacy or the literary world, but she actually um, ended up becoming one of Oprah's book club picks. And, oh my goodness, I feel like Michelle Obama endorsed her or read her book and spoke on it and things like that, but to Yavi Jones. And this one is her program, her book card from the book, The Untelling. So across the hall, this is what I call my Paris dream room. And again, it's inspired by this right here. I love to dream of what might be. Oh my goodness. Is that not speaking to your soul? And again, I pointed this one out before, but this table has love. And, and now that I'm looking at it, I think it's backwards. Put it on my to-do list to flip it around. Um because love is backwards everywhere. But it has love in all the languages of the world. And again, we have the Eiffel Tower and its stages of being constructed. And then we have a few more quotes right here. Live life. There is no take two. Find your stage door and open it. And when we go in here, this is what I call the purple love room. <laughs> and again, it's inspired by this right here. Live, laugh, love. So live every moment, laugh every day, love be on words, guys. Yes, I'll always love you. <laughs> And then this right here. And again, this, the art in here, well, these pictures in here, 
I looked for purposely to hang in this room. And then we have this nice muted purple accent wall. If we go down the steps, I showed this before. I picked up these pieces while walking across the Brooklyn Bridge, so in love with life. And an artist was out there creating art. And I purchased some pieces from him. And again, I hope y'all could see those because of the glare. And this right here, I picked up. And I really need to have it framed. But in the meantime, I just have it hanging up. But this is, I picked this up from a powwow. And my family has a strong Native American background, Narragansett Indian. So I went to one of the powwows there. And what I loved about this picture is it reminds me of me and my sisters. I have three sisters, so therefore four of us in total. And it just reminds me of us just praying for each other, blessing one another, and just being there for each other in solidarity and sisterhood. And boom, we come down the steps. We come down the steps. What do we have over here? What do we have over here? Okay, so now's a good time for me to tell you about my um, obsession. Not obsession. I don't know what you would call it. But what I really love is art that represents femininity. I love art that represents music and nudity. And I think the reason why is because those are the two areas I have the most hangups in. I am not one to be running around naked, but I love the freedom and the expression in those that can. So therefore, I surround myself in the art of those that do. And music. I have no musicality, no music abilities. I do not really dance. I do not sing. I do not play an instrument. But if I was to pick a talent that I would have loved to have, it would have been in those areas areas and the crazy part is is I'm a writer and being a writer is very rhythmical this takes a lot of rhythm to put into writing and all of that but yeah but other than that this is why I'm so into art that just shows the female form in all of its beauties and all of its ways and all of its shapes and all of its sizes I picked this piece up in Dominican Republic and it was probably about $75 or less $75 or less and I had it framed when I got back here in the good old US of A and then I knew like it's so big that I really didn't want to hang it on a wall. So I found this art easel stand. This and it's probably you can hang a put a mirror on the stand or whatever. But I found that in like um home goods, one of those sort of places. My son Andre gave me this statue right here. And then this is Andre. We did this on the Virginia Beach board walk, the old time photo place. So yeah. And then this right here, this book, was given to me by my grandfather. And it's the Confessions of Nat Turner. And again, my whole thing with music. I had wanted a baby grand piano in here. But then I realized the space was kind of too small for baby grand with the rest of the furniture. Um, so we got a piano instead. We got a picture of a piano. And this right here, again, that expression to celebrate in your female form, celebrate in your body. And this picture here is, again, me and my son. It's that same photo shoot where we dressed up as back in the day. I picked this up in Florence, Italy. And again, I had um, mentioned before that it was actually painted on a piece of ordinary cardboard. And I purchased it for... It could have been like 10 euro or less. I'm not even sure. But I framed it once I got back. And I just love how that frame actually works in with this chair and how this chair looks very like historical, like very back in the day, like, you know, somebody's dynasty, somebody's kingdom in Africa, that whole thing. So yeah, love how that goes together. And this little room right here, basically it's an ode to my books. We have pictures of book covers of mine. Now this book right here never came out. It's the book that I've been working on for 20,000 years, twice on Sundays. But I actually loved it. And I had a cover mock-up of it. And that was the cover. And I really wish I could finish that book. That would be dope. 
Um, and so then also I have like this amazing series of short stories that I absolutely love as well. I've had like two publisher companies actually approach me about publishing these short stories, but I'm not finished with them. So no, I did not release them to the um, publishing houses. But that one right there is a short story I did called Jumped. Then we have Heat over there. And these song, the, and then that smile, the blue one, you cannot really see. And then Chase, you cannot see. But these stories were all based on hip hop songs. Like for instance, Smile is based off of the Tupac song, Smile. And then the other things we have in here are just different awards and things that I have won in my professional career. Those are my, those are two of my degrees. And again, just different awards and things that I picked up through the years. In this bathroom, I already showed you this picture in another video where again, I picked it up walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, so in here, again, my son gave me that. A friend had my book. Um, leather bound a copy of my book and this is just absolutely gorgeous I picked that up at the um PX on Fort Belvoir eons ago and I paid a lot of money for that and this is another example of how if I had been somewhere in Africa and saw this it would have been way cheaper and so because again this was made this was original this is an original piece that they were able to come on, come back to America and capitalize on it. I have some other examples of that happening. I'll show you guys. And then the mask, I'm pretty sure I just picked these masks and stuff up from like Marshalls. They, they do not even come from a country. For real, for real. This was given to me by a friend. And so was this. And I really... I need to ask and I need to write on it. Like, where did it come from? Because another friend, she was traveling and she got this and brought this back for me. But I can't remember where, where she got it from. And then again, just some painters, Alex Porter, a black artist. The Middle Passage. And then this right here. Now, if you come over here, again, you're going to see things that just represent music, but they came from um, places like Kirkland, like, you know, nothing, nothing fabulous. And again, a Buddha head. This right here, my friend Corinne got for me when she was in Mexico and bought that back for me. And this right here. Will Haygood, again, my writer friend mentor, and he signed this. This was like out of the um, Boston Globe, right? December 2000, and he signed this for me, so I had to frame it. This right here belonged to my great-great-grandmother, that teapot. That's Cocapelli, and I got that in New Mexico. That arrow behind it is one of those broken arrows that represents me breaking my fear and walking through my fear. And at the time, my fear was fear of being destroyed through love. Oh my goodness, that's what I have written on the arrow. Fear of being, fear of being destroyed through love. Or by love, but I wrote through love at the time. And yeah, so that exercise was a representation of breaking through that fear. Over here, Ray Hart, he is a local artist in this area. So I purchased that from him. And it's actually, this is number 81 of 100, Jazz. And then I painted that at one of them sipping paints. <laughs> and then up here, this these are my books that are all um all based on writing and the craft of writing and that sort of thing. But right there, that's Mama Juana from the DR. My grandma gave me this statue. 
And these chess pieces I made when I was in Korea. Some of them are broken because they don't fell over somewhere. And again, that's probably from Kirkland's. And this is Ray Hart again. And this one is a print. But it has a seal, but it's a print. And a lot of these pieces Andre gave to me from China. He picked them up from China. That right there I picked up in Tuscany, Italy. But you can find that anywhere, honestly. Because I feel like I ran into them again, that vase. I ran in them, I ran into them again here. But it's a foil, so you can't do water. I tried that, and I was like, ooh, it started to melt or something. So, yeah. <laughs> and again, my mom gave me this piece. And she actually picked that up at Walmart. But it fits the theme. Amazingly. I explained before how this piece was free from the DR. And I had it framed once back here. And then it's like, oh, look, it actually goes with this kitchen very well with the vivid, bright colors. I don't know. I don't remember where I picked you up from, but you was cute. So I got you. This right here is another example. I believe I paid about $400 for this. Well, I paid about $400 for this. And again, it's yarn. It's like the, the yarn thing. And I bought this here in the United States of America. And it was a guy who was like, you know, he was from Africa. And he was selling these. Come on, guys. He was selling these. And again, he's like, you know, the proceeds or some of the money or whatever goes back to help a village in the motherland. And so that's what that was. 400 Again, is, was that true? Was it not true? We, have, we don't know. Ah, was he from Africa? We don't know. But that's what we did. Oh, and then I showed you these pieces of art right here, which I picked up in St. Martin. And they actually are pot holders for when you have like hot pots and you don't want to sit them on your counter or your tabletop or whatever. That's what these are. All right, let's go over here first. Again, I showed you how I got these when I was in Ghana. Can we even see? I got them when I was in Ghana from that same artist who I purchased that bigger piece from. And originally, originally, this glass, ah, originally, I was going to give these away as gifts to different people. But then I end up loving them so much, I kept them all for myself. I do that sometimes. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to give this to such and such and such and such. Nah. I'm keeping them. I love them. I love them. And they're meant to also sit on like your fireplace mantles. But I love them. So I kept them. This girl right here, she came from Belgium. And again, I just look in like the little trinket shops or whatever. And I found that one in a trinket shop. This guy, he's from Pair One Imports. Do not let him fool you. Pair One. And these big paintings here... Dominican Republic for super cheap, probably like $40, really. It's the getting them back and framing them that makes them look more expensive than what they are. But honestly, it's like expensive is in the eye of the beholder, honestly, because like I said, this same artist could have somebody here in the United States selling these and it would be all the money. It would be all the money. And I got this from an artist, a uh, young black lady at the time, <laughs> young black lady at the time, um, in Augusta, Georgia. And I was saying how I gave her pictures of me and Andre. And then she created this and put fabric around us like African royalty that we are. That painting my father had made when he was in Korea, this painting of my son I had made when I was in Korea. Now let's take a look at these, the pictures that are not framed. Okay, so here goes some of the pictures that I laid out on this table. And now that I'm looking at a lot of this, I'm realizing I need to hurry up and get them framed because I'm almost starting to forget where they came from. Okay, so this piece right here is leather. This is all done on like leather. This is a leather piece. And I believe I got that from Mexico. It could have been in when I was in Playa del Carmen. And 
These pieces here, Ghana, this piece was actually given to me by my friend Kwame Alexander, and that comes from Ghana. And then I picked this up when I was in Ghana. And then this right here, this was a vision board that I did right before I met Jay. I believe I made this vision board in 2017 and I, and I dedicated it to love. And I met him in 2018. I may, remember making it in November of 2018. I mean, 2017. I met Jay in November of 2018. These pieces right here, I picked up in Jamaica. So see, they need to be stretched and framed. And this is exactly how these pieces look. They were all on cloth, painted on these cloths, on canvas. And then I just had them framed. Yep, Jamaica. This here came from Japan. I had them do my name. So see, I can have that framed. Gosh, and I cannot even remember. <laughs> oh gosh. This one here is when I went to the ceremony when they did the Maya Angelou stamp. And this was in 2015. I always want to have a shadow box made of these things. And this is by another artist friend, Zoha. And again, I want to have it framed. This picture right here, I actually took when I was in Ghana with a cell phone. And this picture was featured in an art show of art from Ghana. And it actually sold in that show for like $500. And that money went toward this village. And as you can see, it's like Timber Junction. Um, well, you can't see, but that says like Timber. The village is um, in Timber Junction. So this one right here, I picked this up in Ghana. And again, as you see, this is that same yarn drawing from, well, not yarn, but yarn piece of art created with yarn as the one hanging up on my wall. I think I got this for maybe $50, maybe $50 com uh, compared to the $400 that the American vendor charged me. And again, I bought that other piece way before I knew. Um, but yeah, I got this at the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. And this gorgeous piece, once again, from Ghana. Isn't this gorgeous? Now this is where memory starts to fail me. I believe I got this in Cambodia. I have to go back and watch my videos. They're in my videos. But I believe this came from Cambodia. This one and that one. Rice paper. These were done on rice paper. And hence they were in these tubes right here. Um, and then this one, Cambodia. And I'm realizing I need it because it's starting to crack. This is on canvas, but it was rolled up in the rice paper, in the one of those tubes as well. But this I got too. And this is where I was saying, I believe this, I believe I paid like $20. It might've been $30. I bargained with the, with the vendor, the shop vendor about this and the price and going down, haggled, haggled with them. And then I settled, I believe it was like 30 or $40, right? I settled and that's what I paid. And when I walked away, they laughed at me and was like, oh, you don't know how to haggle. You don't know, no, nobody taught you how to haggle. So basically it was like, mm, you let them off easy. Now in my mind, I'm thinking I paid a good price. Like it's $40 was still cheap. I know it wasn't over $50. It was 30, 40, I don't know. I probably got it in the video, but that is still very inexpensive according to American standards. But no, for them it was like, yo, we got over on you. Do better, girl. Do better.
So that's why I say, even though you look at it, it's like, well, if, if you pay $400 for this in the United States, why wouldn't you pay that when you're in Ghana? Because when in Ghana, as a tourist, you still don't want to be taken advantage of. If these things are selling to other tourists for a certain price, why should you pay more? You're paying what the shop owner asks for or less because they expect you to haggle with them, right? And of course you can give money out of charity, you can, but I'm not a mil multi-millionaire. So it's not my job nor my desire to go and just pay way above asking price just for the sake of paying way above asking price. No, this is still a livelihood. This is still a living. This is still something that is done for sport. And that's what I got. Haggling is a sport. Sports, guys. <laughs> Haggling is a sport to get over there and bargain and barter and and even trade. Even trade. They will even stop and say, well, don't you have earrings or sneakers? Or they want you to come back with your stuff. When I spoke with this shop owner, that's what he asked when I was leaving. Do you have anything that you could bring back and trade? So for sometimes, even more so than money. They want to trade for their pieces, for the things that they might not be able to get there in the country or whatever, but that is well respected as well. So that's another thing. It's like when you go to some country, sometimes you want to bring extra stuff just to trade, just to trade, to barter and trade, right? Oh, over here, I didn't show you this bag which is also a piece of art. But that bag is by um, Dion Green and she makes these custom bags and they are just so beautiful. They're leather. And back in the day, I used to carry this one all the time. But now she is an art piece in my home. So that is it, guys. That is the collection of my art. And the story of where I think I got them from. <laughs> oh, if I um, open up this door going down to my basement, you'll also see some pieces hung, just kind of tacked up on the wall. Because these are pieces that I don't think I will ever get framed. Those down there, don't pay them any mind, those ones. That's when I was going to be an artist. And I was like, I can, my grandma convinced me that I was an artist and I could paint myself. But yeah, that's what that is. But, um, but yeah, so those are what those are. So that's my collection. Hope you guys enjoyed. I can't get you out of my mind. It's like I feel it for the first time. Been thinking about you all night. I've been searching for this all my life. You're just my